Hi, I'm Donald McIntyre, Senior Editor at the ETC Cooperative. This is the Ethereum Classic course, Class 15, What are dApps? What are classical apps? To explain what are decentralized applications, we will describe first what are classical applications. When we use applications in our computers or phones, we use software programs that are useful for documents, spreadsheets, e-commerce, banking, social media, texting, and many other services. Normally, normally, these apps are controlled and provided by tech companies, corporations, banks, or governments. If they are controlled by the private sector, they are usually also controlled by governments because governments can regulate and order corporations to do essentially what they want. These kinds of applications are therefore centralized, censorable, permissioned, confiscatable, and in many cases monopolistic or oligopolistic. These are some examples like when you use Google services, Microsoft services, Amazon e for e-commerce or banks, Citibank, JP Morgan, th their apps, uh, Instagram and Facebook as social, social services. Uh, you're interacting with, with these centralized tech companies and, and uh, corporations. The way classical apps work is that if, for example, you're using your app from your phone, then you generate whatever action or transaction you want to perform and then the app communicates with the central data center of the provider, which may be a tech company, corporation, bank or government. In terms of hardware format, your phone as a device sends a message to the corporate or government servers of the provider so they interact this way. So you have your phone, this is your app, and it interacts with the data center of, of, of the provider, the tech company, government, bank, or whatever. But in terms of hardware or the physical layer, it's your, your device that sends a signal or a message through the internet to the corporate servers uh, in a data center of the provider. What are dApps? When we use applications that are hosted inside a blockchain as Ethereum Classic ETC or Ethereum ETH, then we are using decentralized applications or dApps because they are not hosted in centralized data centers and servers, but in decentralized networks that are called blockchains. As dApps are basically interaction, uh, as dApps are basically interactions between you, your app on the phone and the blockchain, then they are not controlled by tech companies, corporations, banks, or governments. Because blockchains are networks of peer-to-peer -peer nodes that are distributed across the globe, and they all have an exact replica of the data, including your accounts and, uh, and dApps, then all your information is decentralized and impossible to control except by you with your private keys. A word of caution, when you use the, the apps of centralized exchanges such as Coinbase, Kraken or Binance, those are not dApps. Even though they deal with cryptocurrencies, they are centralized tech companies. That's very important to note. These are real uh, um, dApps, no? Uniswap, OpenSea, this is Classic, uh, Shiba Classic on Ethereum Classic, this is a domain, hence domain name service in Ethereum Classic, this is ETC swap, you can, you can swap uh, wrapped ETC for other tokens. This is heavy swap, another swap for decentralized exchange in, inside Ethereum Classic. This is a sta stable coin, this is a gaming uh, service. So all these are true dApps. When you use Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, uh, even though you're, deal you're buying and selling Bitcoin or ETC, uh, they, they're, not, they're not really decentralized, those services in particular. <clears throat> The way dApps work is that if, for example, you're using a dApp from your phone, you usually open your crypto wallet, such as MetaMask, use their browser to reach a dApp website, and then enter your transaction there. When the transaction is entered, it is sent to a smart contract inside the blockchain, such as CTC, instead of the, date of the central data center of a tech company, corporation, bank, or government. In terms of 
hardware format your phone as a device sends a message to the server of the of the DAP website which then responds by forming a transaction which is then sent by your wallet on your phone to the blockchain network so this is your the, you, you have a metamask for example in your phone usually met these software wallets in, in, for, for phones have their own browser so you use the browser of metamask <clears throat> to access a, a, a DAP website, for example, Uniswap, and when you enter a transaction there that will eventually interact with a smart contract inside the blockchain. Therefore, therefore, this interaction or this application and your money, your accounts, etc., are all decentralized and secure. In terms of the physical layer, uh, then you use your phone. From your phone, a message is going to be sent through, through the browser of the of MetaMask, for example, to the the website of Uniswap in this case, for example, and this interaction is going to generate a transaction back into your phone in your in your MetaMask wallet, and then MetaMask sends it to the blockchain to ETC, for example, to 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 for a trade or, or for whatever is the the app for. What uh, one one thing about this is in the in the future it's very likely that you're going to have the Uniswap the Uniswap website uh, app directly in your phone and many other decentralized apps in your phone directly instead of going through the wallet or both formats are going to exist so if you use a app like Uniswap from your phone directly you enter the transaction and when you and you press send then it's going to ask MetaMask to sign the transaction because your private keys are in your uh, crypto wallet, not, not, not in the dApps themselves. What are dApps for? For now, dApps may be used for decentralized exchanges to buy and sell tokens and native cryptocurrencies, for NFTs and NFT exchanges, meme coins, stable coins, games, domain names, name services, and several other services. In the future, in a paradigm called Web3, which we will explain in our next class, dApps will provide an ample variety of service compa services comparable to today's traditional classical technology. Dapps will be expanded to full banking uh, services, e-commerce, social media, property registries, hotel and flight booking, supply chain management, industrial applications, and many others. Basically, everything is going to be uh, or a lot is going to be decentralized in the future. The great benefits of decentralized applications are that they are censorship resistant, permissionless, and immutable. This enables an incredible degree of security at the individual level on a global scale. DApps on Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is the largest, largest smart contracts proof of work blockchain in the world, therefore the most secure DApp platform in the planet. On ETC, it may be considered that deployed smart contracts and dApps behave under the principle of CODIS law, which means that when they are hosted in ETC, they are truly secure, thus decentralized, censorship resistant, permissionless, and immutable. This provides a very high guarantee for people's basic rights globally. Currently, dApps on ETC range from NFTs, decentralized exchanges, gaming, domain services, meme coins, to DeFi applications. You may find dApps on ETC here, ethereumclassic.org slash services slash apps. Soon there will likely be more applications such as property registries, treasuries, uh, e-commerce dApps, bonds, DAOs, and many other high value use cases. Thank you for watching this video, Ethereum Classic course, class 15, what are dApps? If you want to learn more about Ethereum Classic, please go to ethereumclassic.org. Thank you very much.